expand our imagination. Yeah. 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 And welcome to Washington Unplugged. Bob Schieffer here. It has been a wild week in politics, and Democrats and the administration have continued to push health care reform. We're going to be joined this morning by CBS News' Mark Ambender and CBSNews.com's Stephanie Condon to talk about all of that and what's been going on on the Hill, uh, as well as uh, what is going to be done about this case of the disgraced Congressman Eric Massa, Bart Stupak's struggle to get abortion language into the health care legislation, Patrick Kennedy's uh, rather unusual speech on the House floor, and the possibility of a new party, the Coffee Party. Also, Michelle Levy and the story of a major Washington rivalry, the Congressional Hockey Challenge. But first to uh, Stephanie and Mark. Well, first rule in Washington, if you got the votes, vote. If you don't have the votes, put off the vote. They have now, it looks like, are going to put off the vote on health care reform until later next week. They'd hope, hope to do it on Thursday. I take it they don't have the votes, Mark. And they, they, they do not have the votes, and it is almost unprecedented for a president to cancel an overseas, postpone an overseas trip uh, for a domestic uh, legislative agenda item except, you know, some major catastrophe. And yet President Obama this morning is postponing his trip specifically so he can stay in town and, and chew the ear off recalcitrant House Democrats. Um, the White House has put all their chips in on health care. Uh, they are, however, confident now that they're going to get the votes. I mean, they think that, that the situation basically is this. There are enough Democrats willing to vote for the Senate bill. This is, of course, the Senate bill that was passed that the House doesn't like because it has lots of things in it. Um, willing to vote for it, uh, but they need to hear certain things that they haven't heard in order to vote for it. So that's where they're at right now. What do you now. mean they need to hear? Well, they, they, there's a lot of, again, there's all this incredibly complex procedural maneuverings, but essentially some of them need to hear specific pledges and promises about what will and won't be included in the sidecar reconciliation package, which is going to fix everything. Uh, some of them want to hear uh, what the CBO has to say in a little bit more detail. The Congressional Budget Office, we should hear perhaps a little early next week what that's going to some some more numbers. Um, and others are, are are waiting to essentially hear whether I'll, I'll give you one example. Uh, um, uh, a, a Congressman uh, Raul Gutierrez is a tentative no vote, but what he wants to hear from the White House is a promise that they're going to go forward with comprehensive immigration reform. So there's a lot of horse trading going on. And, and there's a lot of ducks that have to, there's, you know, there's, what, 200 and, you know, 215 yeah. votes at least that the 215 ducks they need to get into a row. So got to line them and, up. And, and it's all about the members of the House don't want to vote for this Senate bill unless they have the things they don't like about it separated off and put into another bill and they want some kind of assurance because they don't trust the Senate. They don't trust the they Senate. They want some kind of assurance from the senators that indeed they will act on the reconciliation package and that that's really what it comes down to. Uh, Stephanie, yesterday uh, they were talking about trying to vote on the reconciliation part without actually voting on the underlying bill so the House members could say uh, no, uh, I never voted for that That's bill, right. but that went off in the ditch too, did it not? Uh, it seems it may have. There's, uh, you know, a lot of, um, everything's up in the air in terms of what is possible uh, procedurally. Uh, the parliamentarian will play a big role in saying uh, what the Senate can do and thereby what the House can do. And apparently he told him yesterday, look, uh, you, the president has to sign the underlying legislation before you can take up the second bill, which means the House will have to vote on that. Well, so it actually, is a yeah, leap of faith for him. There's there a little complication to that this morning. The parliamentarian's office is backing away from that interpretation. Not so much that the president has to sign the bill, but essentially the bills have to be, I mean, the bills have to be passed and, and be transmitted to the president, which is a different, slightly different uh, ball game, and it's a way of Republicans again attempting to sow dissension in the Democratic ranks. I mean, the, again, the, the the irony here, 
and the fundamental dynamic is mistrust between House Democrats and Sem Senate Democrats. They're worried about being BTU'd, you know, a reference to a very tough vote that the House had to take in the 1990s on a tax that the Senate promised that they would take, and then they didn't when it they came out to it. saw that limb right. off right out behind them. Right. They, they were all left out there having voted for that, right. and then the thing didn't And pass. that fear and is that's, driving all that's of That's exactly us. right. That's exactly. I want to talk to you about something. Uh, we've been hearing all about the uh, Tea Party and all of that, Stephanie, but you wrote a piece this week that said there's a new political party forming out there sort of on Facebook called Coffee Party. What is that all about? Yeah, that's right. It's, uh, it's actually kind of a reaction to the Tea Party. There's uh, this movement of people saying, you know, we're angry too. We're angry about a lot of the same issues, about uh, fiscal responsibility, the bailouts, government transparency, but they're really uh, put off by the Tea Party approach and also the Tea Party's distrust of government. They say that uh, government has to be part of the solution. Um, and so they started as a reaction to the Tea Party, but it's become, it looks like it's uh, turning into a more serious movement. It has um, more than 110,000 followers on Facebook, uh, thousands of people signing up on their website, and they're going to have hundreds of meetings on Saturday. Wow. So uh, up until this point, it's just been kind of something on Facebook, but now they're actually going to have meetings where people are going to come in person? Oh, yeah. Um, they've got quite a few meetings planned in almost every state for this Saturday. And uh, it seems like right now they're uh, focusing on consensus building, uh, building a platform. But uh, once uh, Congress uh, goes into recess in a few weeks, uh, they plan on holding um, coffee with Congress meetings. And so they'll be inviting the representatives. More genteel forms of the Tea Party exactly. or the, or the town they, hall when meetings, they, When basically. they were sort of disrupting the uh, uh, town hall meetings, they're going to invite the congressmen to come to their meetings. That's so. right. And it'll be interesting because uh, I believe that some of the Tea Partiers also are planning uh, to invite congressmen to uh, their own town halls. So there will be some competing coffee party, tea party uh. meetings going on. Are you on a coffee break. person? Are you tea up? Or I'm a wine person. Are there <laughs> wine parties? I wonder, you know. <laughs> In the meantime, I'll be back here at the ranch trying to figure out the <laughs> deep into the woods of this health care parliamentary uh, disputes that are going on. Uh, the only thing, I think the bottom line right now is they don't have the votes now. Democrats say they think they can get the votes, uh, but kind of where it goes from there, who knows, and the Obama children are not going to get that nice vacation they thought they were going to have because the president, I guess, has now decided he's going to go to Indonesia uh, by himself. By himself, basically. yeah. So, so there you are. Unfortunately, they'll be, they'll, 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 hopefully the weather will be nice so they can play outside. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys have a nice weekend. Uh, the relationship between congressional lawmakers and lobbyists adds a new meaning to the term, it's complicated. But last week, the rivals took to the ice for the congressional hockey challenge to decide who really rules the roost. And here's Michelle Levy now with that story. Lawmakers and lobbyists have differing definitions of who really runs Washington. But once a year, the strange bed partners sharpen their skates and take to the ice, where the winner is a little more clear. Nick, Good game out here, good skaters on both sides. Good workout time, good game. You may think hockey is a tough sport, but many of the players think the annual game is tame compared to their daily sparring. Oh, much less aggressive, much less aggressive. This is a nice break from the day-to-day -day nice of Capitol day. Hill. Uh, personally, I'm looking forward to crushing a few of the lobbyists. They've been acting up all year, and it's time the lawmakers give a dose of their own medicine for once. And it was medicine they needed, when for a second year, players hung up their suits and hill passes and brushed off some pretty rusty skates. Well, they, some guys haven't played hockey in years. You know, one guy hadn't played in two years. You know, last week they were, you know, shaking the cobwebs out, getting the rust off their skates. Um, but it's tough to make a whole lot of progress in two practices. Missing from this year's challenge was Senator John Kerry, who was recovering from hip surgery. But there were plenty of politicians there to defend the Capitol's honor. Congressman Brian Higgins and Mike Quigley forged a tight offense. And goalkeeper Anthony Weiner, well, he did his best. But the jury is still out on whether he should stick to his day job. Great job. I hate when lobbyists get the best of you. Well-dressed staffers line the stands to win points with their sweaty bosses, but the real reason players and fans showed is charity, to support the Fort DuPont Hockey Club. This year they managed to raise more than $50,000 to give underprivileged youngsters a chance to skate.
And they raised money for our club so that we could um, pay our ice bill, uh, support the kids, whatever they needed. Oh, it means the world to him. He sleeps, eats, talks hockey. You can ask him any questions you like about hockey, he'll tell you. Philanthropy aside, the victorious Key Streeters were not shy about flaunting their 7-2 victory over the Hill folks. Well, I think we made a bunch of lawmakers mad, so I don't know how we did. We'll see in a, in a few months, I guess. We routinely do this kind of battle with the dark side. Usually we win better, though. While D.C.'s lawmakers and rainmakers may act tough on the ice, the rivalry is clearly good-natured. Too bad they can't wear their pads during policy negotiations. Michelle Levy, CBS News, Washington. Thanks for watching Washington Unplugged. Make sure to watch us this weekend when I'll be talking to White House Press Secretary Robert Gibbs and Senator Lamar Alexander, Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz, and Karen Ignani, the head of the America's health insurance plans that'll all be on television on Face the Nation. See you then. If we don't expand our imagination, just in case, it's being worse.